Hi, everyone. My name is Kirk Bachman, and welcome back to The Ultimate Dish. In today's episode, uh, episode, I'm speaking with Chef Donna Merton, an award-winning architectural designer, real estate developer, and food systems strategist. Within the last two decades, Donna has owned and operated a local food hub, catering business, meal plan service, juice bar, and a sustainable design and construction company. She is currently the chief forager and co-owner of the Farm Eats Direct, or Fed, food truck right here in Boulder, Colorado. Join me today as I chat with Donna about her entrepreneurial spirit and how she builds sustainable food systems that not only produce great meals, quality meals, but also offer amazing culinary experiences for the Boulder community. And there she is. Good morning, chef. Can I call you chef? Yes, please. Awesome. Do. Awesome. I love it. Thanks for being here today. Absolutely. <laughs> How, how, how is first and foremost, I've got so many questions. First and foremost, though, how's the summer going? Summer has just been an explosion. Um, we have been growing so much this year and it has been absolute blast. We're um, doing farm dinners. We're working with farmers. We're going to music festivals, um, breweries. And it's, it's really fun when you have a food truck because you can just kind of go where you think is fun that day. Um, so it's one big party all summer. <laughs> I love it. And it's been hot, right? I mean, yeah, it, it's brutal. <laughs> and we're literally in a black box um, in the food. Yeah. <laughs> so we're almost in our own little oven sometimes. And, uh, you know, I, I feel bad sometimes because the guys behind the grill, they really they get hard. And, you know, what we started doing is wearing camelbacks in there because we don't have time. Oh, that's brilliant. Customers. That yeah. is brilliant. Oh yeah. my gosh. Why didn't I think of that? Chef's camelbacks. I absolutely love that. Well, you it's don't have time for drinks, right? And they have their thing right here. And yeah, it has been awesome because they stay hydrated and, you know, we, I have lots of Gatorade and stuff for them. But, um, you know, when you get super slammed, you just don't even have time to get you're, it. Yeah, yeah you're just pumping. And I remember, you know, back in the day when I was behind the grill, you'd find the largest Bain Marie or whatever, just fill it with ice and, you know, just pour it. It's It's been hot in the kitchens too. You have to kind of balance it, right? So it's like, okay, I get that it's 80 degrees in the kitchen. We've got five ovens on, you know, so hydration is super, super important and fans yeah. and circulation. Yeah. I can't imagine driving around in a in a black box, like you say, oh my God, can, can I just say how appreciative right off the bat, how appreciative people are going to figure out the story here in a minute, but yeah, um, so appreciative of the work you do. Um, and, you know, when you sit back and you think about how serendipitous life is, right, you meet people sometimes at the most interesting moments be, be, because of, I'm going to take us back a few months, but because of the, you know, really tragic Marshall fires uh, at the, at the end of the last year, beginning of this year, you know, I had the chance to meet you. I met chef Greg, Jake Plummer. Um, who's this, this, who's this hippie with these freakish large hands bringing all these mushrooms into fed. I mean, just amazing Brandon and others in, you know, in the circle that, that you run in and, now we like to think we we do. And um, also a formal thank you. I you know, just read the really amazing article on you and 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 Fed and 5280, um, really great, you know, local magazine. And, uh, you know, you mentioned us and, you know, the opportunities that you and your team present to our students are so absolutely appreciated. And 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 so thank you for that. Was that ever even. Um, this is not on the script. Was that, even, did you ever even think, you probably knew that there was a school here in Boulder. And so just being the person you are, very connected to education, which I'll get to in a minute, yeah. um, that, wow, I, I need to, you know, provide this opportunity to others who are entering our industry. Was, was that part of the plan a little bit? You know, it was because, um, you know, I've kind of have been a student all my life in the universities and, you know, I've got three degrees and a master's degree and all kinds of stuff. And I'm always going back and teaching and mentoring at the university at CU right now. And um, I just love working with students um, in general and I love teaching. And I think it's kind of an important part for me as part of FED is to kind of perpetuate and to move this forward. 
And um, one of the things I really love about working with students is they're they're super open minded and they're like sponges, you know. Yeah. And we're trying to create a whole new way of working with local food and basically turning the restaurant methodology inside out. And it's really hard sometimes when people have had a lot of training or a lot of they're, they're just set in their ways. Um, it's really challenging to bring them in and say, guess what? There's no rules. There's no structure. This is a totally different way of doing things. Um, but I wanted to like bring in a new generation of chefs um, that are kind of learning this through your school and your university, you know, what you're teaching too. I think it's very um it's, it kind of ties together for me. Um, yeah, it's contemporary, fun. right? It's contemporary. It's relative. It's real. Yeah. That That's the vibe I, you know, felt when I was with you guys that really, you know what? It's about the food. It's about mm -hmm. the food. It's about um, being kind to each other. You know, hey, I'm behind you. I'm next to you. What can I do? What can't I? I couldn't believe just for that short period of time that I was there with you guys, how many, how many people just like stop by. Like, just like, you know, even Jake, right? He arguably, you know, one of the most, you know, famous people in the state of Colorado, right? Maybe, yeah. you know, um, and so humble, you know, didn't say anything. I, I, I mean, everybody's just about the food. Let's scramble. Mm -hmm. Andy from Moxie. I mean, everybody was just into it. Yeah. Um, is that sort of the vibe? At So I'm going to paint the picture. So Boulder is a super cool community. We love it right to the west are the mountains to the east are beautiful communities of Lafayette and Louisville and Superior so on and so forth you know you go south you hit golden Colorado which is amazing you go north you hit you know north Boulder you know you're you're, you're kind of in the mountains and that's sort of where you guys are how, how has how is that it's like since 2020 right ish mm -hmm. yeah how right. is how has the community welcomed you into in, in, into that area of North, North Boulder? You know, it's been amazing because I, I tell my crew all the time, I was like, we're always making new friends, like everywhere we go, because <laughs> we go to really cool events, right? And it's like, and the events keep getting bigger and bigger. So I feel like we're touching more people. But, you know, I feel like we are we are so integrated in this community because we are a voice, you know, we're for the, for the farmers. We're telling people what all the farms are doing, you know, what we're getting the foods coming from, but we're also nourishing the community too, with this super healthy food. And I think that we have a community that is so appreciative of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I really didn't even notice how many friends we had honestly until, um, cause we see them so sporadically until the Marshall fire kind of, occurred and we just were like calling for help because usually you know i do a lot of donate you know donating events and you know charity work and nonprofit, whatever i love to give back as much as i'm getting um i feel it's a really good balance for me so um to to see everyone kind of come together and you know as the like the most fascinating part is is that you know a lot of it behind the scenes where we made like 1800 meals that week and we got them out and um a lot of what a lot of it was you know we had over 50 volunteers we had or more because they were on the truck too we had um countless farmers coming in and they were coming in in the snowstorm foot of snow all night and that's probably a part a lot of people didn't see was you know um props to them they would just come in and drop hundreds of pounds of meat off no questions asked you know and leave um but so it's so beautiful kind of yeah yeah it and like they are so passionate about what they do that's that when they eat it you know it's so um we put a lot of heart and soul into what we do yeah let, let, let's let's um i i, I do want to make one comment kind of piggybacking on that. I, I can remember too, sort of jumping into Andy's truck and yeah, cause people are familiar with Moxie, right? They're, they, yeah. they, they have their places, right. And their people and yeah. slowly, but surely the next day, later that afternoon and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, people just start trickling in. Cause Andy was putting some stuff on social and, and it was, Donna, can I just tell you, I mean, just standing there next to his truck and we had all the lasagnas and salads and stuff, simple food, right? Just simple, simple, beautiful food. Mm -hmm. The appreciation was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely amazing. We did a video. I'll have to share it with you. I got to 
make sure. And, and Andy was so kind. We got up into the, you know, the top floor of Moxie there. And we just sort of reflected, you know, a few weeks later, we've reflected on that whole experience. Um, and it, it, I mean, it was super heartfelt, getting emotional, thinking about his words, right? How you, how people like you and Andy and Bobby and others in the community, you always constantly, consistently put others in front of you. And that is what Boulder is all about. And yeah, yeah I, 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 that's the theme today too, right? Is, is giving back. And, um, but I do want to talk about you and I want to talk about education, right? Big mm -hmm. part of who you are. You have a master's degree in sustainable food systems, mm -hmm. you know, um, makes total sense to me. I wonder if a lot of people are like, like, what is that? What does that mean? Yeah. So I, I, I imagine that you had been thinking about that for a long time. You, you grew up on a farm, right? Uh, yes. Many generations of farmers, right. In the yes. Indi Indiana region there. So what was that like? What was it like? It's hard life. Mm -hmm. So you probably knew that right off the bat, but it's a, a fulfilling life. Um, yeah. and so, so, so walk us through that. You, you're a little girl, you're a farmer, <laughs> you're going to be a farmer, um, no matter what, but, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take yeah. us back. So it, it's, it was, it was an amazing world to be in because, um, you know, uh, my mom was, you know, fourth generation. Um, and um, my grandmother was actually, she's my hero. Um, and I'll tell you how this all goes full circle, but um, she was actually a private, well, they called it back then a private cook, but she was the private chef for the Khan's hot dog family at the time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Wow. So she was where I actually learned all my culinary skills from. Um, and we're talking old school, classic farm, rustic, French, you know, all the those best, things, the best, you know, all right. everything. And then her having um, a farm too, that she ran, you know, with cows and chickens and vegetables and all that. Um, and I was kind of, um, you know, we, my mom was on the farm. We kind of were visiting all the time and my mom kind of checked out from the farm and went to the city, you know, and then we lived in the suburbs, but we always were back on the farm, you know, kind of thing. And um, it was hard work every time it was a vacation, you know, to go. Um, and uh, it was net, it was fun, but it was always, you know, shucking corn or, you know, picking peaches or whatever's in season, um, you know. So I was exposed to all this these amazing things. But at the time I, as a kid, you're like, ah, oh, this is really like, we really have to butcher chickens today or, this is you hard. Know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or my, you know, my uncles are like pulling snapping turtles out and making turtle soup and all these things. Right. And, uh, at the time I was just like, you know, this is kind of cool, but it's hot. We don't air conditioning, you know? Um, but what the, one of the main things that I really, um, took away from that whole experience was, is nothing was ever wasted. And um, I mean, they don't even have trash service, right? So you either burned your trash or the scraps went to the pigs or you ate them or you canned them or, you know, um, there was all these places that food waste went, but wasting anything was never an option. I mean, even if you burn trash, it ended up being heat for the house, you know? So um, I think that really stuck with me. And then, um, you know, I was just totally indebted. And I grew up my entire life eating fresh food off a farm, right? So even when my we, we moved away and we went to the suburbs and, you know, my mom would compost in our yard in the suburbs and I was so embarrassed because I yeah. was like, oh, why are you doing all this, you know? Why are there so many cans in their yard? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we'd have chickens in the backyard and the neighbors would complain because of the chickens. And I, we, I kind of felt totally out of place a lot of the time because I was in this farm world most of the time. Yeah. But my mom was like, you know, so and then I, I kind of, you know, as you get older, you're like, you totally rebel. So I was like, I'm so getting out of this. So, you know, I traveled around the world. I became an architect. I was a real estate developer for a while. You know, um, I was so like anti-farm. Um, but the whole time I was always found myself cooking and, you know, going back to my grandma's recipes and things like that. And, and honestly, even just working in restaurants, because I just love the vibe of restaurants and it's so much hard work, but it's, um, 
I don't know, the work ethic of a farmer kind of shows me what, it's very similar for chefs, I think too. Um, so um, I ended up kind of going full cycle after 20 years of being a wheeling and dealing real estate developer and doing 200 acre projects. And all my projects are sustainable. We did high end, you know, we did straw bale homes and net zero energy. And so the whole concept of um, sustainability has always been in my blood. Um, but I think when the housing recession hit is when I kind of pushed the reset button too, because, you know, my company crashed because of the recession and I was building houses and um, it was a good, and at the time I literally told myself, if this does not work out, I am going to become a chef period for the rest of my life. And that's it, you know, and it happened. And um, so I ended up going back and working on farms and doing farm dinners and kind of just kind of, you know, um, just kind of testing that whole world again. And I was just so happy to just to be outside all the time. And, um, and then I just kind of realized at one point, I was like, you know, I've kind of went full circle back to my grandma's entire life, like, you know, and her being my hero. And, um, and then, so it's in your, it's in your DNA, right? One, one thing oh, that, for that sure. I have to comment, you just made a very, very important comment. So you, you were talking about being a chef and you were talking about being outside all the time. And yeah. I think we have to marry the two, right? So chefs should be outside at the farm, understanding where the food comes from. I absolutely love that. That's yes. the message. That's the yeah. message. Yeah. So, so, go, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. I was going to say on that point, I think it's really critical because I take all my staff out to the farms all the time. And I make sure every week I go and keep in touch with the farmers because I think just being on the farm just for a few moments is just to see how hard oh, it is, yeah. work, you know, and then to pick up the produce and, you know, and that was the whole premise of fed is I want to know exactly where everything comes from like every day and not just have it shipped across the U S or wherever. Um, you know, and that's, um, that's kind of with that, that whole pivot point, you know, of, of this whole, like, change that I went through actually ended me back up at CU to get my master's in sustainable food systems because it, for me it was the next step and when I first went my goal was to integrate my architecture and real estate development knowledge and how do I start to create like future food complexes and grow on buildings and inside buildings and you know uh, but as I was in the program and it, it's phenomenal program because it teaches you about global global food local food food distribution supply chains you know all these integral parts that are so important to um a chef too and understanding how our food is grown what's happening in the future you know what are what are all the technologies and you know all these things so um but at the end of the day i found myself um studying about global food systems a lot and um, one of the things that kept coming up to me as we were talking about developing countries and, you know, how the farmers work and how they operate. And then I, I kept coming back to the concept of, well, what about in Boulder County? Because if you study how, you know, even globally, like every local farmer has the same issues, you know, mm -hmm. and when I brought it back to a local level, I was like, you know, how, how can I, you know, take all these worlds that I've been in and kind of conglomerate them into one and, you know, kind of, um, move this whole mission forward, I guess. I, I love the, um, um, just to back up a little bit, I love the connection to architecture as well. And there's so, so many correlations to, to being a chef constructing images, you know, the canvas, you start with a blank canvas. I too tried to study architecture in college. Um, yeah. And even in high school, I just could not get the drafting pen thing down. I, it just was like, I'd rather just do it with food, right? Yeah, but sure. it, it, just to go back a minute to the farm, I, I, again, obviously it's in your blood. Um, you came back to your roots. I absolutely love that, pun intended. Yeah. Uh, are there some specific principles that you either learned or didn't even realize you learned from your time on the farm, five generations worth, mm -hmm. that inform and drive your work today. You started to touch on that a little bit. Yes, and there's quite a few things that do. I mean, first and foremost is my mindset is nothing goes in that trash can. So, you know, um, and it's, it's a really hard um, 
concept to get, you know, from. So, um, so that's kind of the premise is everything that comes in, we're going to use. And there's like 50 different ways we can use that because I just keep remembering of how my grandma was. Is it a stock? Does it become a ferment? Um, do we, do we break it down even further? How do we use the stems? How do we use the leaves? You know, um, all these things. Um, because I think there's all these critical foods that are being missed because they're just kind of chopped off and, you know, my, I, I feel almost mindlessly thrown in the trash can. Um, and I was like, how do we rethink that the way a farmer would think about, you know, this whole plant needs to be used or this whole animal needs to be used. So um, that's where we come from. And, you know, the, and it's the whole premise behind what Fed does is we purchase surplus menu and then saying this is what we need to order. Um, I call the farmers and I say, hey, you bring us what you have. That's what our menu is that day. Um, so um, it's completely it's completely reversing the whole concept. But it, I feel like it's the only way we can really start to work with farms instead of trying to, you know, revert the other way. So um, but going back to your question, I would say I learned old school farm practices on fermentation, um, canning. Uh, how to use meats. And this is a really fun story, which you'd appreciate is, um, so one of the farmers had a ton of these organic laying hens and everybody's like, what are we going to do with these? They're too tough. We can't cook them. You know, we have no idea how to do this. So I actually ended up calling my uncle on the farm uh, and asking him because, and we're talking like five generations of knowledge. How do we make a tender laying hen? Because I remember as a kid eating roosters, <laughs> that would just melt in your mouth, right? So, um, and you know, in, in most cases it would be like, oh, let's just not use these or let's pitch them or let's just boil them down, use the stock. Um, but, you know, it was amazing the practice. He's like, no, you've got to, you've got to get acidity in there. You've got to get tomatoes in there, tomato juice. And, you got and we actually end up layering the entire pan of um, laying hens with um, Lazy Jay's pig farm had a ton of lard across the top. And then we braised it for like 24 hours. I tell you, we sat there and ate two hens. Like <laughs> we would have eaten the bones if we could. They were so good. So I think for me, it's so critical to kind of bring back some of these artisanal practices. Um, and even one of the really important ones for me is, is fermentation. And, you know, my chefs, they crack me up all the time. They're like, God, you put ferments on everything and everything gets ferments. <laughs> and uh, one of my chefs, he's Italian, Chef Greg, and he's like, he had a heart attack because I uh, put ferments on his pasta. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to have a coronary, but we've, we've moved past that. But um, if to me, it's like, you know, really trying to express and, and figure out creative ways to use things and um, everything. And, and the other day we had like pig heads come in and you know we're all boiling pig heads and scraping meat off and using that but it's so rewarding to me to use every part of everything you know so yeah yeah you know i love the i just love the full circle and the fact that you you know reach back out to your uncle for you know practices um fundamental techniques that have been around for a long time sometimes we get over our skis and we forget how simple i mean oh my gosh it's tough add acid. Oh gosh, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Raising, long, slow cooking. Yeah. I absolutely love how you kind of, kind of brought that into the conversation. Yeah. You, you know, speaking of which Donna, I, you know, so many students will listen to the show and, 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 and I think, you know, you see the taglines all the time, sustainability, eat local, um, compost your food. It, it, could you walk us through just from your perspective, you know, mm -hmm. you know, a master's degree in sustainable food systems. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to just get your, your take on what is an ideal, in Donna Merton's mind, sustainable food system, because it could look a lot of different ways, right? It could. Um, but I think what to me, it's it, number one is, is enhancing our local food economy by giving actual money back to farmers. And the, the way I reason I say that is because a lot of times <clears throat> you always hear about, oh, farmers giving X, Y, and Z away. And they are already have so much on their backs and, you know, and they're strained in the financial straps and the land and they're fighting nature and all these things. 
we've got to start actually physically giving them money back for their food so that they can grow their food economy. And that's what we do. And a lot of my farmers are on farmer subscriptions. So every month, every week, they know they're getting X amount of money from me. They can bring me whatever they want, but they know they have a fixed amount that's coming in every week from me. Um, and what it's, it is, it enhances what they do. They know they're, because right now about 40% of the food produced is left on the fields um, and considered financial loss because of its seconds and it's imperfect and mm-hmm. all these other things. So my goal is what if we take that 40%, what if we can utilize that? And as chefs, we're super creative. We know how to work with food and we know how to process it super fast. We're the only ones, I think we're the only, we are a very essential link in sustainability in the food economy because we have the tools and the power, literally. So, um, <clears throat> so you know, how do we start to bring that, um, how do we start getting the money back? And that was my first goal. So last year we captured over 40,000 pounds from farms. Um, and this year it's close to 80,000 cause we are just blowing up. We just added a second trailer. Um, and, um, we're doing a really cool other project, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> so I'm always, I'm always on the move. So Can I tell you, I love the passion. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to sit back and listen. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 So, um, so that's the first part is we've got to start thinking about not just taking food from farmers, but you know, even if it's seconds, giving them money back so that, cause that grows the whole food economy, which, you know, from a, a master's, I'm going to get very geeky on you for a minute from a master's <laughs> food economy side of things, you start to create community resilience within your community because you're using, utilizing all the food. Plus it's the most nutritious. It's coming in fresh every day. It's organic. They're working with soil regeneration. They're doing all these things in the background, you know, to help the environment already. Um, So, you know, I feel like as chefs, if we can help perpetuate that, but one of my biggest things is, and I mean, studying food systems, being a chef, is like, we've got to change the way we do menus. We've got to change the way we look at things in restaurants, food waste. All these things have got to be turned on their ear. And it's been, I'll tell you, the last two years have been pretty challenging to be like, okay, everything you've learned as a chef, forget it, because it doesn't, it's not going to work in this kitchen if we want to work 100% with local food. And we, right now on our truck, we have 95% of what is on our truck is local and within 10 miles. So if you can imagine trying to figure that out because industrialized food is very streamlined, you know, and it's very easy to access. And, um, but the problem is I feel like we, we, in restaurants, we establish these menus and then we have these menu items and then we prep for those menu items. And if they don't sell, then maybe we have a special, but still, you know, the food doesn't get utilized properly. But when you start to be like, okay, this is the food I have in my restaurant today. This is how I have to be agile, right? And use what I have. And then you've got to have a really talented chef, right? That knows flavor profiles and can't just fly on recipes. I mean, we're on the fly all the time. Um, I remember Greg and I, sometimes we would literally load the food truck up with food and we are talking about what the menu is going to be on the way to the event, you know? <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. And I'm just going to interject real quick because it's such a, such a enlightening conversation. And you think about, you know, our, our namesake, Escoffier, if you go back a hundred years, there weren't any printed menus. May, maybe the king on occasion had a favorite, but right. Yeah. It was, what was what was grown, what was picked, what was brought in. Yeah. Uh, what, what did we make sure wasn't poisonous, right? <laughs> before, yeah, exactly. <laughs> before we served it, you know, um, Escoffier years ago from an academic perspective and accreditation perspective, we, we, um, we sought a patent on the, the concept of farm to table in the education space in the vocational education space. So we spend a lot of time trying to 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 really make students understand what farm to table means. So I I love the conversation of you and Greg driving to an event saying, "Hey, so what should we serve?" because in a small 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 sort of way, we do the same thing here. Students are used to, you know, in traditional education the teacher says, "We're going to have a test tomorrow. You know, here's what you should study. Be ready." In our world, it's we're going to cook tomorrow. We will decide on the ingredients tomorrow. Maybe we'll go to the farmer's market. 
we want you to put a production sheet together. We want you to critically think mm -hmm. at the at that moment, yes. not overnight. You know, um, if you want to braise, that's great. I just don't know if I'm going to provide you or we'll find a product that yeah. lends itself to braising. Yeah. You know? Maybe it's sauteing. So yeah. um, I, in many ways, Donna, you're sort of validating what, kind of what I see in the kitchens here every day. And I, yeah. I absolutely love that. Can I, um, I, I, I want to, I, I I, I want to give a plug to see you a little bit too. I love, I love sure. that we have a research university of, of, of this greatness here in our local community. Yeah. So I'm just super, super interested. I, I have some friends who have, earned master's degrees in food anthropology, for example. So yeah. they went to the University of Texas. They were really interested in that anthropology, but they wanted to tie it to food somehow. So they built their own master's sort of journey. You know, I'm going to go to Oaxaca. I'm going to study food. I'm going to learn how to cook and, you yeah. know, yada, yada, yada. Was it, does CU actually have a specific track for, for someone who's interested in sus sustainable food systems or is it part of a larger, you know, uh, science degree? Or did did you sort of create this? Is this your degree? No. So they, um, I was in one of the first tracks in the Masters of Environment program, which is a brand new program that they started. Okay. I think it was back in 2016 is when they started. I came in 2017, um, <clears throat> but I was waiting for them, and they had a specific masters in sustainable food systems and all you do is study food where it comes from how it you know what supply chain distribution like the whole the whole philosophy of food like it is are you getting chills i'm getting chills just hearing yeah, that yeah. all they do is study food all we do what? is study well and study food like you know systems and where yeah. it's coming from and how do farms work on a grand scale and you know, globally and locally, and then we get down into philosophies of it, you know, it's, it's, and it's phenomenal. I like recommend it to anyone who really wants to, and I, I this is the, it's just the way of the future. We've got to start really focusing on our food and our systems and it's essential. And, uh, um, to kind of tie that in to all the things I did, you know, I was, you know, most of your life, you're like, why am I like, how does my life even make sense right now? Like, you know, I'm an architect and a real estate developer and now I'm a chef with a food truck. Like, I don't get it. But now it's starting to all come I, together. I, yeah, yeah. And I told, I've told everyone, I said, there is no way on earth, because I've been an entrepreneur for like 20 years, that I could do exactly what I'm doing right now without my 20 years of entrepreneurial experience and all the stuff I learned. Because I feel like it's just all... I'm pulling from it all the time in different it, resources. It was meant to be every step of the way. It's like a book, right? Yeah. The chapters yeah. make sense as they, yeah. as they come together. Yeah. Um, I wanted to come back. Um, so, so many incredible comments that were kind of just, you know, letting slip by, but I'm, I'm but I'm writing down because they're so important. You mentioned uh, uh, the resilience that a community can put together. Brilliant. Super, super important. Yeah. Um, the importance of nutrition, um, organic nutrition, um, the environment. We, we, um, we took a group of students and some other, we took somebody from, uh, uh, from the Boulder Chamber of Commerce this past weekend on Saturday, we took a group of maybe 40 people up to Wellington, Colorado, where one of our chef instructors has an 80 acre farm that he operates with his family. Literally his, his, his wife, Amy is a scientist at CSU. So they, you know, they're just living it. And he, and he's taught for us for, for over a decade. He's an amazing human being. Yeah. Um, but one thing that was really interesting in pure layman's terms, just as simple as possible, he talked to our students this weekend about how it, it is almost so simple that, that, that I kind of giggle a little bit about how, you know, his, his, um, his unique breeds of, of, of cows are wandering around dropping nutrition everywhere they go. And then these birds come in following the nutritional track. If you follow my drift. Yeah. And what are they looking for? They're, they're um, unknowingly cleansing the nutrition by pulling out Lara and, you know, other ickies. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that nutrition goes back into our soil. And then over here, oh, by the way, I've got, you know, several bees that are doing their thing. And by the way, I'm trying to 
grow some some cover crop over here and I'm I'm irrigating in this certain way over there. And the whole time I'm, you know, and I've heard it several times from Chef Steven, but it's just like this amazing circle of life. You know, they they don't eat anything that somehow, some way didn't come from that farm. My family doesn't eat any eggs if they don't come from Chef Steven's three daughters, chickens, <laughs> who are all named, right, yeah. on the farm. And I, do you believe, Donna, and, and you know, excuse the passion, I get, I get wound up. Do we need more literacy around how important everything you're talking about, this resilience piece is really resonating with me. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how do we better educate those in our community? Let's just start with Boulder. Yeah. That this is really important. Do we need to get in front of our, our Congress people or, or do I just, just piggyback on what you're doing? <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I think I call, I call it um, luring instead of lecturing. And oh, I tell okay. people, so I just have people try our food and then I explain where it came from. And they're like, this is the freshest food I've ever had in my life. And then you can start to educate them because now it's just not you telling them. You can talk all day you want about sustainability and local food, blah, blah, blah. But you, you hit someone's palate and it makes a memorable experience. Like I have people that come back that literally are like, I am addicted to your food. Like I think I about it that. all the time. I, I thought that. about your salad from last year, you know, but it's. And it's so funny because we, and you know, this is one of the really interesting things that we do is so we take the five dining, five star dining experience and we put it on a compostable plate and off <laughs> it to the public, right out of a truck. I love and, it. I love it. You know, and it's the same techniques, the same flavor sure. profiles, like, but we are so into like color and diversity. And what I'm trying to even do on my plates is teach people about the eco cycle biodiversity you're talking about on the farm of, yeah, you need sprouts and you need your microgreens and you need your like all, and I make the plate look, I always tell my, my staff, I'm like, make the plate look like a forest floor. Like forget the side salad, just slapping the lettuce on. We have to be as passionate about how we compose this is how passionate the farmers out about growing it. Um, and I have a funny little clip for you, a story about, so I go and get a lot of the produce myself because I just want to taste it and understand it. And, um, I always laugh because I've never seen so many cool bugs in my car all the time <laughs> as when I go to an organic farm, right? Because there's yeah. so much biodiversity and, um, you know, and it's, it's teaching people about the whole food system too and the importance of animals on the property. And, you know, and like, if you go to like Golden Hoof Farms, I love going there too, because it's like, they've got the pigs and the sheep together and then the chickens come in and eat the poop and then you know all these things and then you see all these toads and there's flowers and there's birds you've never seen before and you know and, and they're I, all supposed to be there they're all supposed to be there yeah for a reason yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's and it's like we just need to get back to that so I kind of try to take that experience and put it on a plate I guess because I just, I just feel like it's the only way and we've got so many followers now and we're growing so much and when I started it, uh, it was really great. One of my business partners was always like, Donna, it's just one plate at a time. That's all you have to do is make every plate exceptional. And I tell my crew all the time, I'm like, every plate that goes out is our reputation and it's got to be exceptional because we are representing the farmers. And that is like something that is so critical to me. Um, and it's so important that everything is as fresh and as amazing each I love how you just connected that to the farmers as well as your own brand, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. Really quick story of, I'm sure our friend Eric Skoken, right? Um, so he was speaking at graduation a few years ago. We were at, at CU at Mackey and he was a little late. I was a little nervous. I was like, where's Eric? Where's Eric? So he comes in late and he's got like mud on his shoes and stuff. And, and he leans over and he's like, um, sorry, you know, the pigs got out this morning and I, you know, I had to go run and, and then he leans over and says, what should I talk about today? You know, where do you want me to go? As Eric would, right. He didn't have yeah. a written speech or anything. And I said, talk about the pigs, Eric, talk about the pigs. And he did. And it, it was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So let's, let's, um, can, can we talk a little bit about fed? Um, so, so you're a chef, 
you prioritize sustainability, you're a real estate developer, designer, an architect, it all an entrepreneur. It all kind of comes together now, yeah. as we've said, right? Yeah. Um, I think you had a venture called Farm Stand some time ago, brick and mortar sort of operation that, yeah. and then you pivot to this mobile uh, experience. Can you can you connect the dots of like so how did how did that come about? Um, you know, so that's probably somehow connected to see you as well and yeah. and yeah. kind of fast forward to to Fed today because I I feel free to be an evangelist this morning sure. about Fed because it's important, right? Yeah. yeah. So um so the farm stand was my first iteration of how do we start to to capture seconds and and support local farmers and I was just starting school at the time. Um, and I was so passionate about it. And, you know, I was working with Richard over at Riverside um, off of Broadway and Arapahoe. And we were trying to think of like really innovative ways of how do we start to get just seconds to the public. Um, <clears throat> but what I found is, you know, it's kind of a lessons learned on that is I was in a fixed brick and mortar location trying to sell seconds with Boulder rent, you know, um, and it just <laughs> didn't work. And the problem was it was just seconds. And people didn't really get it until like, I felt like the next phase, um, in order for local food systems to work effectively, it's gotta be mobile, right? And it's, you've gotta be have access to the farms. You've gotta eventually be able to cook, connect maybe rural farms to urban food deserts or whatever it is. And so I started to think about how, what if everything's mobile? So I was like, well, maybe I need a mobile commercial kitchen. Then I can start making amazing food. And then I can start teaching people what amazing food tastes like, because a lot of them you know, aren't even educated on that part, you know, or having these super fresh meals. Um, so that was like my starting point. And then um, at CU, they had a, um, it was kind of interesting, they had a new venture challenge in the business school. So I do a lot of work in the business school too, because of my entrepreneur background. And, um, you know, that was a phenomenal experience. And we ended up winning, um, Fed ended up winning. So that's where Fed was born. Um, and it became the, you um, a whole concept and it's, it grew out of this, this competition, this business competition. We end up winning the uh, presidential sustainability award at CU for the project. And, um, and then I ended up getting investors and we started to, you know, cause they were funny too. My investors were like, well, Donna, we can talk about this all day long, but if we don't get a truck, we don't have a business. <laughs> I so, love it. Um, I love it. So that's kind of where it evolved. So we're like, well, let's get a truck. Let's see what happens. Um, and that's kind of how it evolved. But, but the thing is, a lot of people don't realize is Fed is a, a template for a franchise model that we're trying to do across the U.S. So the goal is to have, you know, start one in Boulder and put our second one. We've already, we have a new trailer in Lyons now. So our, our concept's growing. Um, and then we put one in Denver. And then what we do is we start to create, uh, connect the food systems around that. So all the farms within a 10 to 20 mile radius around each node would go to that truck. Um, and then you start to create, so if you can imagine, it starts to create this entire local food fabric across the US when you start with trucks. Um, so that's that's the, the vision and we, you know it, we're totally on point. And I don't even think I've been able to talk to you since our latest thing that I was talking to you about earlier, we actually moved into the old Hewlett Packard complex that's in Loveland. Um, oh, wow. It's 400,000 square feet. The kitchen is 2,000 square feet, has 10,000 square feet of seating. Um, it used to support 4,000 employees. The kitchen did five walk ins, four loading docks. You know, um, we're partnering with um, two other chefs to share the kitchen. We're going to create a, a food court there. Um, but I'm going to be working on creating a whole new future food complex there of growing outside and also having a centralized distribution processing center, a real one for all the farmers to come to one spot and dump their seconds. So we will process there. We will distribute there. All my trucks will land there. Um, so that's kind of my next big thing that's going on. Um, that's unbelievable. I know the building you're, you're talking about. So, um, it's like that mycelium, you know, network of, of, of mushrooms under the, the surface. Right. Yeah. And yeah. At, at, you've, you've got to be so excited about that. Um, 
I'm, I'm just super curious. I was going to ask about a franchise model. Um, are there specific, not to put you on the spot, Boulder's pretty special. Yeah. Austin, Texas is pretty special. Yeah. They're, the Carolinas are pretty special. Are there specific, uh, again, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do, do you go to more welcoming communities or do you identify communities that need you and maybe don't even know it? Um, I think we just start going into every community, honestly, okay. because um, okay. and you kind of have to adjust. Wake up, America. Yeah, we're <laughs> feds on its way. Here we come. Here we yeah. come. I mean, and it's funny now because because people know what our mission is and what we're doing. And every community has farmers, right? That And they want to support their local farmers however they can. And we are kind of that connector just to get the ball rolling, literally, <laughs> um, and bringing in the truck. And, and we're just start. So at first, when we started, it was kind of like, you know, everyone talks about local food. Yeah, is this going to work? You know, blah, blah. It kind of sounds like white noise after a while, you know? Sure, sure. And, so many people have tried and what makes you different and how is this and I said you know what just try our food that's all I tell people I don't even like I was like try one of our burgers see what you think it came from your farmer three miles away like (laughs) no I mean truth be told right I I was um I'd love for you to I, I have one more question for you but I'd love to I was reviewing you did an employee employer spotlight uh, for us um, not too long ago where, you know, you get on online and you just tell everybody, our students anyway, about Fed yeah. and which we greatly appreciate. And one thing I noticed is that you, you, you kind of share your mission, your North Star, your vision all, all in one. Um, can, can we hear the mission for Fed? Yeah, um, my, my mission is pretty simple actually. And it's just to support local farmers mitigate food waste and be a, a conduit to connect farms to the community. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, I love that. And, and it's right. It's yeah. right to the point that that's the best mission, right? Just, just tell people what you want to do. So yeah. abs- absolutely love that. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to let you slip away until uh, the name of the podcast, Donna is the ultimate dish. So in your mind, what is the ultimate dish? Hardest question of all. Well, um, I got to say it's one I just created um, for the five kingdoms of nature dinner that we did. Um, And so I kind of created on the fly because I got a bunch of mushrooms in from Jake Plummer. On on the way to the event. Yeah, (laughs) Well, literally was a couple hours before because he just I was like, what mushrooms are you bringing? And he brought me all these oyster mushrooms. I ended up roasting them and making a um, cashew cream mushroom roasted tart. Oh no. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, sprouted. It, so it was a sprouted, um, sprouted coconut and, um, pecan crust. I did a roasted mushroom with honey and cinnamon, um, and cashew cream tart. And then I made a red algae vegan caramel for the top. So Ooh. that is like my, wow. My wow. Little masterpiece. Right? And, and plant-based to boot, right? All plant-based. Uh- all wow. natural, like natural, like local honey, local mushrooms, local everything is besides the algae. But actually, I found an algae. Someone's growing algae in Longmont now in spirulina. So unbelievable. Cool. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, um, yeah. So and, and, and speaking of cool, you are. So is Fed. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to text uh, Jake when we're done here. He'll get such a kick out of he was on the show a couple of weeks ago, also just unbelievably humble and um, surprisingly talkative. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He is, he's, he's got a lot to say. He's that, got a lot to say. You talked to him about mushrooms. And uh, yeah, it's funny. I have him in my phone as Jake, the mushroom farmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah he's, he's been, he was, yeah, he's so fun to work with. So I, I love it. I've got some other ideas, so I'll reach out. Um, Okay. Thank you for everything you do for Escoffier. Thank you for everything that you do for our community on behalf of my family and my friends. And thank you for just being you. Keep it up. Thank you. Um, hello to Greg. And um, I will certainly be in touch. Come see us again, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Ultimate Dish Podcast brought to you by Auguste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts. Visit escoffier.edu forward slash podcast where you'll find any materials mentioned during the podcast, including notes, links, 
and other resources. You can also browse other episodes and subscribe.